Hi, Jason from Stormark. Today we have a rapid turn maintenance video for you. We're going to cover the symptoms that may indicate the need for a speed sensor adjustment and how to make this adjustment. The symptoms of a misadjusted sensor or a bad sensor are inconsistent feed rates at higher RPM. Anything above 1500 RPM can really start to show a problem. If you don't get any feed rate motion while you're programmed in constant surface and feed per rev mode, or if you just see inconsistent feed motion during a threading cycle. This would all indicate the need to check your sensor adjustment. So there's four simple checks that we can perform. The first one being, just check what version of PathPilot you're on. Make sure you're on the most current version, do the update, and just to verify that everything is on the current version. The second check we can do is just to go to the status page and to manually turn the spindle over by hand. In the upper right corner, you'll see the encoder Z light. As we rotate the spindle around, we should see that light flash one time per revolution. So if we don't see that light, we definitely have a problem with the LED again. But if we do see it, it doesn't necessarily mean that the sensor is working properly. So the third check we can perform after that, open up the control cabinet and watch the D9 LED light. So what I like to do is I like to command the spindle speed at something greater than 1500. Turn the spindle on, but I turn the slider bar on all the way down to zero. So when I turn the spindle on, I just watch the D9 LED light and I slowly increase the slider bar just to watch the LED. So we should see a nice consistent flash on that LED. As the RPM increases, if we see it start to skip a step or just turn off altogether, we know that we definitely need to adjust that sensor. Another test that we can perform is to just switch the machine from constant surface footage to a fixed RPM. So we'll switch it into G97 mode, which lets the machine run at a constant spindle speed. And then we can run it in a feed per minute mode, which is G94. So if we switch the machine to run in constant RPM in feed per minute mode and everything functions as normal, then we know that we've isolated this problem down to the sensor itself. So to start this out, we're just going to take the sheet metal cover off. So there's some thumb screws on the left side of this. We'll remove these and we'll slide off the sheet metal cover. This gives us access to the belt and the motor plate. We'll loosen up the mounting screws for the motor plate and then we'll remove the belt and we're actually going to take the entire motor off of the rapid turn. This just kind of reduces its weight and makes it a lot easier to make the adjustment. We'll just set it over on the side of the table. We'll lift this thing out. Make sure you remove your speed sensor cable. Definitely want to remove that before you remove the unit from the machine. So once we have all that, we'll just pick this up, take it over to the workbench so we can make this adjustment. So we need to remove the bottom plate. So let's remove the socket head cap screws from the bottom. We'll tip this thing up on end. When we're doing this, we want to make sure that we keep the cable clear of any obstructions. so we're not setting the rapid turn on the cable itself. The plate is pinned on, so you may have to tap on it lightly with a hammer just to get it to slide off those pins. So when we flip it over, you'll see that we set it up on a block just to keep from resting on the lock pin. We can see the speed sensor plate. So there's four socket head cap screws that mount this down. So we're just going to go ahead and remove it. Here you can see the flag on the spindle. How this works is every time this flag passes a sensor, PathPilot sees the signal change, and that's how we calculate RPM. So what we need to set is the spacing in between the sensor and the flag. So what we're going to do is loosen up the two lock nuts on the sensor. We're going to remove the little plastic plug. Then we're going to go ahead and reinstall this. So we're going to adjust the sensor up until it bumps the flag. So we're going to actually just manually rotate the spindle around until we can see the flag through the holes. And we're going to just bump the sensor right up against the flag. And then we're going to be able to reach through here with our finger and just lightly snug up the sensor and then we can remove it and, and tighten it up with a couple wrenches. We do have some adjustment in the slots themselves as you can see. So we get the rough adjustment with the sensor itself and then we come back and we fine adjust it with the slots. So again we'll get it set up with the flag right in front of the sensor and then we're going to slide a piece of shim stock in between this. And then we're going to go ahead and slide the plate forward to pinch that shim stock and then tighten the plate up. This ensures that we have the appropriate amount of clearance. We're going to rotate the rapid turn by hand to make sure that the flag is not actually hitting the sensor. And then we can reinstall the bottom plate. So we'll slide it over the dowel pins, we'll reinstall the socket head cap screws, and we'll just tighten everything up. Just a quick check on the bottom, make sure we don't have any burrs or scratches. We'll stone it off if that's necessary, and then we'll go ahead and set it back in the machine. Once we get it back in the machine, um, we'll go ahead and plug the cables in, reinstall the motor and the belt, and tension the belt. And then we can reinstall the motor, the belt cover, and then we'll be able to test the unit. 
So then we'll power the machine back up, pull it out of e-stop, and just get the machine re-referenced and ready for use. Then we can go ahead and perform the same checks that we did earlier, where we check the status page and we rotate the spindle by hand. We can command the spindle speed and watch the D9 LED. And then we can do an actual test cut again to make sure that the machine is moving in constant surface and feed per rev mode. If all these tests prove to be successful, then our rapid turn unit is functioning properly and we can go ahead and start making some more chips. If you're still experiencing problems with your rapid turn, um, it'd be a good time to contact our technical support team and they can help you with further troubleshooting. Thanks for watching. Please check out other YouTube videos here. And for more metalworking tips, tricks, and stories, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.